Um, and uh, uh, this book, which was to be available tonight, uh, isn't for another month, regrettably. There are now galley copies, now galley copies like this one out in the hallway. Uh, as you go out to look at, they can't be purchased, unfortunately. But the whole darn thing, every page is reprinted out in the hallway by the elevators. You could even say you don't have to buy it, you just stand there for hours. <laughs> they, they, uh, Ray Ring, uh, a, a technician here, did a fabulous job, and uh, the university and, and the Gotham folks are greatly credited for, for making that kind of exhibit possible. Um, and tonight uh, we're going to hear uh, uh, Nick Torkelson, an SDS activist and artist, uh, do a, a, a PowerPoint presentation of his strip, which is about the ERAP Education Research and Action Project, uh, SDS effort in Hazard, Kentucky in the mid-1960s. Uh, then we're going to hear uh, Harvey Picar uh, speak about uh, comics, uh, a graphic work as, a, as an artistic and political expression. Uh, then there'll be a, a sort of a panel uh, discussion with two people speaking. One is Jeff Jones, uh, former weatherman. I suppose it was inevitable to mention that. Uh, and a, a notable SDS activist and a notable environmental lobbyist and uh, activist in recent years. And uh, finally, the only young person up here, so you won't have any difficulty identifying her, uh, and that is uh, Senior Berrigan, uh, who I'm terribly proud to say is a student of mine at Brown, but also was uh, one, of the, one of the founders of the new STS. Um, let me say very briefly that the last session of mine here was around this book, Wobblies, uh, and uh, it was a really great time uh, and it uh, is a sort of uh, a lead-in to uh, SDS and, and this volume, uh, both as an expression through comic arts of ideas that are very radical and in some ways are sort of uniquely American. One hesitates to say that, but as I've been a scholar of the women's rights movement, the civil rights movement, the IWW and SDS, I see a commonality there that is not quite the European or Asian or African take on what the, the, the left is all about. Uh, different in many ways that, that uh, uh, one needn't go into, but still able to find the sentiment uh, uh, among uh, broad numbers of Americans who don't so much go for Marxism, anarchism, or those other kinds of words that end in ism. Uh, it's a curious and amazing thing that the project to create this comic uh, originally was devised by an editor uh, named Thomas Levian at uh, Hill and Wang because his Aunt Alice, his favorite aunt, was a leading SDSer in Austin. Uh, and uh, that much of the book uh, came out of interviews uh, or stories that people sent in of local SDSers. The plan, as it evolved, was to have an overview story written by Harvey Picard, the Organizational History of SDS, and then to have a whole bunch of local stories, because my perception as an oral historian uh, and as an activist in SDS is that the activity of chapters often had very little to do with what happened in the national office and what the opinions were at the center of the organization. It was an extremely decentralized and uh, one might even say disorganized organization, and we loved it for that as much as we were frustrated uh, by that fact uh, in, in many, many ways. So uh, perhaps it was understandable that SDS, a new SDS, should begin as if out of nowhere. Uh, on Martin Luther King holiday in 2006, uh, a, uh, a, an online uh, editor, Thomas Good, in the audience, announced uh, that uh, a new SDS was beginning and uh, young people joined online. Uh, now I think perhaps the number may be 5,000. From all kinds of places, but perhaps true to SDS, more from out of the way places than the, the big colleges and the, and, and the prestigious colleges. Uh, and those of us who are members of SDS, even if we're vicarious older age members, can see a, a subject line at the end of each new membership saying, how did you learn about SDS? And currently the 
favorite sayings in that line are uh, history class, a book, a film, my parents, and at a demonstration. Not necessarily in that order. But what they suggest is that uh, the young people who join SDS are deeply interested in history. History means something to them. The history of the 60s means a whole lot to them. And uh, they are looking to develop their own way, to find their own way forward. My view is they have every right to make their own mistakes since we made so many uh, in our way. Uh, but that in uh, making mistakes and finding out what to do, uh, they will uh, make their way at last. Uh, my uh, other view from uh, uh, someone uh, Mike and I admire so much, William Appleman Williams, the famous historian of empire, was uh, uh, Americans wake up only when the empire falls into crisis. Uh, otherwise, we seem to be asleep most of the time. Uh, and uh, if uh, at the new SDS finds itself, it will. Uh, 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 amidst the imperial crisis. And finally, this is the last thing I want to say. Uh, the, uh, uh, Harvey will speak about this uh, uh, considerably longer and more articulately. Uh, this book and the Wobblies and other books are a way of bringing history into the 21st century for the audience in particular that learn, takes in as much data as people my age did, but takes it in a very different form than we did. Many of you fewer words and a lot more pictures and music. And the project, the large project, to launch uh, non-fiction educational comics owes something to us being children in the days of Little Lulu and uh, classic illustrated, but also the sense that if we're going to reach out and teach history to the new generation, we must find ways to do it. And uh, the creation of comics, not just as an educational form, but a true com recognized comic art which is now surging forward and recognizing it by the New York Times and so forth, uh, becomes an important uh, a step. And I have a, a, a role, at least in, in as editor as I was of Radical America way back when, in uh, trying to, to bring it into existence and encourage artists and writers to do it. So uh, with that, I want to point you towards a leading example of uh, what an artist can do to bring that history back and, and give it new sense, and that's Nick Torvalson and his story of going to Hazard, Kentucky.